I'm Amanda Freed. I'm Leah Amico. I'm Tariah Flowers. I'm Lovey Jung. I'm Mike Candrea, head softball coach of the women's Olympic softball team. Welcome to Sports School. In the following segments, we're going to talk about proper throwing mechanics. And I'm going to break the body down into two halves, the upper body and the lower body. We're going to begin by talking about the grip, the proper way to grip the ball, and then we're going to talk about the arm circle, assuring that we use our arm in the proper way to reduce injury and increase accuracy. And then from that, we're going to talk about the mechanics of the lower body, what our body does as we prepare to throw and what our lower body does as we step toward our target and assure a good strong finish to reduce the chance of injury. Let's begin our throwing segment with talking about the grip. Number one, we always want to grip the ball across the large horseshoe of the ball. This will allow us to get 12-6 rotation. If you look at a clock, um, you want to make sure that the ball is spinning backwards. So most of our players will either use a three-finger grip if they have a small hand, or if you have a larger hand, you can use a two-finger grip. A key with the grip, though, is the positioning of the thumb. We want to make sure that the thumb is underneath the ball. If I grip the ball with two fingers, then my thumb will split the two fingers that I have on top of the ball. If I use a three-finger grip, the key here is that I keep my pinky off the ball and that I use my thumb in a position where it's right across from my middle finger. The other thing is we want to try to keep the ball in the base of our fingers and not deep in the palm of the hand. A great way to throw a change up is to choke the ball. And if you will assure yourself a good grip, you will have a better chance of getting proper rotation, 12-6, which will give you much more accuracy and your ball will carry much better. In this segment, we're going to talk about the upper body when it comes to throwing mechanics. And this is a very important part because this is where a lot of throwing mechanics break down. The shoulder is a ball and socket joint, and a ball and socket joint is made to go in a circle. And what the common problem is, is a lot of young throwers will use this like a bow and arrow and they'll start pulling back. And a good indication you'll see is as we get up into this position to throw, if you have a kid that has the ball pointed toward them, they probably used a bow and arrow action. And what we want is a circle. So one of the main things we're gonna start with is we're gonna have Leah demonstrate thumb to thigh. This is the first move in throwing where she's gonna take her hand down to her thigh, keeping her hand on the ball. The next thing she's gonna do is bring the ball up into a throwing position where her upper arm is parallel to the ground, getting her elbow high. If you notice right there, the ball is pointed away from her. And this is the proper position for her to be able to execute the throw. The only thing that we change, depending on position, is the length of that circle. If I'm an outfielder, I may go thumb to thigh when she makes her approach to throw. If she is an infielder, we want to shorten that arm circle so she's going to go thumb to chest. If she was a catcher, she would be even shorter where it would be thumb to ear. But if you notice, every time she brought the ball back, she went into a circular path and she wasn't pulling the ball back like a bow and arrow. The glove side is important also. Now most of the time you'll see two different types of actions with this side of the body. And I always like to divide the body in half and describe that Leah's right side of her body is her directional side. The left side of her body is her power side. And so the directional side is kind of like a scope on a gun. We're going to use this to kind of focus on our target, and most throwers will either point their glove at the target or point their elbow at the target. Either way is fine, but you need to make sure that you don't get sloppy with this part of the throwing motion. And once the elbow or glove goes up and the hand goes up, now we're ready to make a good smooth transition with our lower body to make a strong, accurate throw.
The lower body mechanics are very important because the purpose of our lower body is to get our body in position toward our target to make a strong, accurate throw. The very first step that we're going to do as we prepare to throw is we're going to step toward our target at a 45 degree angle. And this is very important. If I'm left-handed, I'm going to step with my left foot. If I'm right-handed, I'm going to step with my right foot. But it's important that you jab step with your foot at a 45, which allows me to get my hips and my shoulders turned as I step toward my target. This is a very key position here. It's just like hitting. We want to make sure that we have a good foundation, that we're in a good athletic position where our knees are inside of our feet. We have a slight bend at the waist so that we're in a strong position to create the rotational phase of throwing as we transfer our weight forward. Remember in hitting, we talked about that negative move. Well, the same thing that occurs as you prepare to throw. As Leah prepares to throw, she's going to transfer her weight to her left side, and then as she steps to throw, her weight's going to follow her arm. When her weight goes forward, her arm will come forward, and now she's in a great position with her upper arm parallel to the ground, wrist behind the ball, ready to make a good, strong, accurate throw, departing backspin, and creating a follow-through. At this time, I'd like to bring in Taraya to demonstrate from the right side, because it's important that young people see the proper footwork as a right-handed thrower. So at being a right-handed thrower, if you notice, when Taraya steps toward her target, she's going to step with her right foot at a 45-degree angle. Again, she's going to get her hips turned and her knees turned, so now her feet and hips and shoulders are in line with her target. Now from there, she's able to transfer her weight back, and then now as she steps, she's going to transfer her weight forward, the arm follows, and then she's going to follow through, making a good, strong, accurate throw toward her target. The final phase in throwing is the follow through, and the follow through is important for one particular reason, that's to reduce injury. Most of the injuries that are current throwing happen because of the deceleration phase of the arm. And the deceleration phase is from the release to the follow through position. So it's important that we assure a good follow through. A couple of key points that we want to see is number one, as we step toward our target and our arm gets up in a throwing position, that we want to make sure that we get our shoelaces pointed to the ground. The second thing, is we want to make sure that as we release the ball that we finish and let our arm follow through to the opposite side of our body, putting our body in a good balanced position at the end. Let's review the throwing mechanics. Beginning with the upper body, a couple of key points. Number one, the shoulder is a ball and socket joint, so we want to make sure that we assure a good arm circle. We want to keep our hand on top of the ball as we come out of the glove so that we're thumb to thigh. And then as we lift our elbow, we want to make sure that the ball is pointed away from us. The upper arm is parallel to the ground. And then on the other side of our body, the directional side, we're either going to point our elbow or our glove to our target. Remember, this is the directional side of the body. The other, the throwing side will be your power side. As we talk about the lower body, remember that the lower body is what puts ourselves in a proper throwing position. So we want to step toward our target at a 45. We want to make sure that our hips and shoulders are in line with our target. And now from there, we're prepared to start our rotational phase. As we bring our arm through, we get in a good release position to release the ball. And then from there, we're going to make sure that we assure a good follow through letting our arm finish to the opposite side of our body. Okay? It's also very important that you use your glove side. So when Leah throws, you're going to see that she's going to point the glove, and then as she comes through with her throwing side, she's going to gather the glove toward her heart and actually use it to pull to generate a little more power with her backside. The importance of proper throwing mechanics is twofold. Number one, to help us get accurate with our throws, which is a big part of the game, but more importantly, to reduce injury. And as you can see, as we talked about the upper body and the lower body, they have to work together. The more we can get our upper body and lower body to work together, 
then the more accurate we can be and the stronger we can be. You know, Leah, for instance, is an outfielder and also plays the infield. And, you know, Leah, when you're working in the outfield, obviously you've got a little different arm circle than you do in the infield. How does that change and what are your key thoughts on that? When I first became an outfielder, I saw that I really had to focus on having a bigger arm circle so I could take any pressure off my shoulder. I also had to really work on my backspin, make sure I had good spin so my throw would be more accurate if I was hopping it to third base or to home. And I really, really had to focus on my backside so I could get that power for that long throw because a lot of times that's the throw I'm going to be making in a big game situation. When I come back into the infield, I really have to focus on getting back to my short arm circle coming up so I can make that quick short throw. So it's, for me, it's just a matter of recognizing where I'm at and really focusing on the little mechanics. So as you can see, mechanics are very important, but the key is that this arm is a ball and socket joint and it's made to go in a circle. Whether you're using a long circle as an outfielder or a short, short circle as an infielder, it's very important that you understand that proper mechanics will increase your accuracy, but also reduce your chance of injury. And one of my favorite drills to work on upper body mechanics is this drill on one knee. And Leah's got a ball that's striped. What a great way to work with your kids on rotation is just take a ball and take some electrical tape and make a stripe. That way they have a visual when they're playing catch, whether they're throwing the ball with proper throwing mechanics and getting proper spin. And this is a great drill to isolate your upper body. And the only thing we're trying to do here is to make sure that we're going down thumb to thigh, okay, that we're getting a good proper arm positioning where the ball is pointed away from us and then you notice that they're trying to take their chest to the knee to really exaggerate the follow-through motion. One key thing on this though is make sure that you are tilted at a 45 degree angle so that your shoulders are not pointed towards your target. Again we want to make sure that we get our hips and shoulders turned so you have to point your foot at a 45 when you do this drill. The next thing we're going to do is from a side straddle position, and this is a really good progression to work with young kids. And from the side straddle, now we can start utilizing our lower body and our upper body together. And you notice how they're starting with their hands at the center of gravity. They're going to go thumb to thigh, load on their back leg like we did in hitting, take the shoelaces to the ground, and then follow through. The other good thing with this drill is they can start utilizing their left side or use their glove to pull. Okay, we want to make sure that that glove is used to pull toward our heart so that we can really utilize our backside as we make that strong, accurate throw. And then the last transition is we're going to go ahead and step toward our target. Again, stepping with a jab step at about a 45 degree angle. Step toward our target, get our shoulders and hips turned toward our target. And now we make a good, strong, accurate throw, good follow through, good finish. Very nice.